about to head into the gym and today's been pretty good so far i uh, just woke up from a nap actually uh just because waking up in the middle of the night to feed valor uh can get tiring sometimes um and this is only the beginning but uh very fortunate very blessed very thankful for this opportunity this blessing from god um to have a son and trying to do my part in keeping my body fit so that I'm ready uh, for all the, you know, excitement, joy, and um, presence that is going to be required of me uh, when the time comes for him to start running around and doing things. So I got to be prepared. And um, today, I'm doing a run, then doing a, a workout after that. So it's going to be about an hour and a half in the gym. And then it's back home. But I'm going to go ahead and share the story of my deployment after this. All right, workout complete. 35 minutes on there and um, a little over three miles while I was running I was listening to a podcast 30 minutes with the Perry's by Preston and Jackie Hill Perry if you're familiar with them they're both poets but uh, Jackie is also an author um, both of them as parents have uh, beautiful daughters and uh, what their podcast was about today was, or while I was listening to it, was Jesus and therapy. And I think that that's so important for um, people today to realize that you need to talk through things with somebody that has a fresh perspective. Um, like a therapist, a counselor in the military has a lot of different people you can go to. But um, anybody that you can speak with outside of your friend circle that doesn't have a bias um that you feel comfortable with um is a, is a great piece as well but that type of person is able to walk you through what you can't identify yourself or acknowledge yourself and they bring that out and allow you to sit with that think on that and work it out yourself they're not there to fix you they're there to give you the proper tools so if um, that's encouraging to anybody, please check out their full podcast. I got some more work to do. All right, peace. All right, so full workout complete. Uh, took closer to two hours, but uh, feels great to finally run again. Haven't been running that often with um, coming back from the deployment and getting ready for our baby to be born. At the time, we didn't know boy or girl, but now we know Valor, our son, being here. So um, being about a month, a little over a month settled into being home, uh, it was time to get back on the grind and get into the full workout mode that I want to get into starting with today. Um, the week previous was kind of like the warm up, getting uh, back into the flow of working out for a bit of an extended period of time, about an hour each day. And um, now we're at two hours, feeling great, about to go home and uh, haven't forgot deployment story coming right up. All right, so as I promised, uh, my story about my recent deployment. But first, if you didn't know, this is Eli who? The husband, the dad, the brother, the son, and the airman. And that's what we wanted to focus on for this episode. This is Valor, uh, my son, if you have not already met him, and uh, my whole priority 
uh, was my family during my deployment, which was something that I want to get into a little bit. But first, I'm going to hand him off to his mom. All right, so like I said, um, being in the Air Force makes me an airman. I took a deployment and my priority was my family. So the whole thing leading to the deployment was that I was actually on a vacation with my wife. We were in Las Vegas and uh, just going about our normal life, uh, enjoying uh, the scenery the environment, the activities in Las Vegas. And all of a sudden my wife started to feel uneasy. She was tired um, and just didn't want to go out as often. So one of our friends uh, who we went there with uh, that morning, he was like, hey, you might be pregnant. And we laughed it off, um, unexpecting that to actually be the case because we had prayed for it. We have uh, been married going on seven years this July and for five of those years uh, five and a half we've been trying to have a child of our own and uh, until then uh, we were unsuccessful due to, to medical reasons and um, just did not be in the right time us believing in God's perfect timing for us and the things that we do ask for he wants us to have those things like a family um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having a family. So obviously that is going to be a blessing from the Lord. And uh, we waited and prayed and fasted at times and had family members pray for us. And we shared our hearts with those uh, who were closest to us, that we wanted kids. We invited kids into our homes. We are godparents, multiple children, multiple families and love on them as if they were ours. Um, so with that heart full of love and waiting for a child of our own, it became the right time um, in August during that trip when we found out. But when we returned, um, that's when my wife took the pregnancy test and for sure knew she was pregnant. And a couple weeks after that is when I received the news that I would be deploying. So, um, it's in August, we get back mid-August, September, uh, mid-September is when they tell me, hey, you're getting deployed. I was like, okay, this is pretty exciting. When do I leave? Next week. It's like, that's not enough time. So how is this going to work? Obviously, uh, there's processes and procedures you have to go through in order to get ready for deployment. So, um taking those procedures it took me about two two and a half weeks and by september 30th i was out the door and on my way to honduras so uh, what is my job i'm a public affairs professional and that means that i take care of a variety of things all dealing with um public recognition so uh that is media uh regarding interviewing and storytelling through local news networks that involves social media uh, through the basis platform the basis page on various platforms that involves uh, news stories uh, photography and video straight out of our office on base and also just working with the community a large portion of what i've actually done is coordinating tours uh, in um, and surrounding the community. So with that, um, and I've spent time in each of those sections, but for this deployment, I was specifically going to be telling the story of Joint Task Force Bravo. And while I didn't know too much at the time, um, I'm a man that likes to do his research before I start something. So I did as much research as I could and uh, found a little history on the base but uh, when I got there, nothing could really prepare me for what was going to happen. I had found out it was a humanitarian uh, focused base and also an army base, but joint task force, meaning um, the specialized and that specialized uh, specialization was humanitarian efforts, but also 
um, that it is multiple branches. So Army base, but Air Force was involved. Marines were involved. During my time there, Navy was involved. So this was a large effort to do a great work in um, South America. So uh, what we uh, ended up doing, I'll get to a little bit later, but like I said, my focus was my family. So I spent a lot of time in quarantine because we were in COVID still and uh, two weeks quarantine right off the bat when I get there. That uh, was, uh, it was hard. Like I like to get up and keep moving and do things that have substance, have um, a presence about them that matter, that go the distance and sitting for two weeks in a tent uh it <laughs> it felt so isolated it felt so um just not comfortable and although we did have multiple people in the tent where we could uh talk and communicate and 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 share experiences i did develop bonds with certain people there that helped me get through the deployment it was, they worked in different areas so when i needed something i could call on somebody and that was great already knowing them previously and having that connection. But um, it was hard because I went and I was like, I'm leaving my wife behind. She is pregnant uh, in her first trimester. I'm missing the second and third trimester being on this deployment. I just know that I need to get back to be with my family, be there for the birth. And in the military, unfortunately, um, uh, not so much now, maybe, but definitely within the history of military members serving this country, there have been multiple people who have missed out on the births of their children. And that was just not something I was willing to give up. I know what I signed up for, but if I had any say in the matter, I was going to be home for the birth of my child. So with that, after the two weeks quarantine, we jump right into getting to work. There's an all call, which if you're not familiar with the military, all call is when the commander um, presents information to the entire base in an open platform, open forum for people to ask questions about what's going on um, and for him to present relevant topics that are um, important to how the future of the base is gonna proceed. So. He was basically uh, getting introduced to those who hadn't met him yet. And he actually brought up um, being able to go back home for life events, meaning births and deaths or other things um, that are very important and inside of your immediate family. So uh, with that, he opened the floor. I asked the question two weeks in, brand new. Nobody on this base really knows me besides those I was just in the tent with, my boss who was also quarantining at the same time. So I asked him, sir, I've got a wife at home who is in her first trimester and I need to make it back home in time. So what is my uh, possibility of being able to go home to see the birth of my child? How do we make that happen? And he told me, I'm going to make sure you get home for the birth of your child. So right there, a lot of pressure is relieved, but still I have work to do. So what he follows that up with, because he's talking about priorities, he's talking about being there for your family. Um, so that was already, I'm on the same page, I hear you, sir. And um, the next things he was saying was, I'm going to make this deployment worth it for you but you have to make it worth it for yourself. You have to put in the work to get the most out of this deployment. And then the last thing was, you have to go back home a better person than who you came here as. So you have to do this work, uh, not just for the base, but a work for yourself, a work for your family, a work for your loved ones, a work for those who matter, so that this isn't a waste of time. This is a great opportunity for all of you and I want you to get the most out of it and I'm appreciative to him uh, Colonel John Litchfield 
for all that he did um, and his candidness, his openness. I worked with him very closely being in public affairs uh, as I'll get to what the mission was that while I was there. And um, so from that moment, had that out in the air that was said and done. And um, from that point, we were waiting for an exercise to commence. But before the exercise could happen, a hurricane hit the area, Honduras, Panama, Guatemala, um, and a couple other areas. Those are the places that I ended up traveling to to document the humanitarian efforts, life-saving aid that was done. And um, because of uh, Colonel Litchfield's fast response, I was able to take some amazing footage that never in my life would I have thought I would get to do. Uh, being stationed at Grand Forks Air Force Base um, for going on five years, I haven't seen too much action in the sense of a broader scope of uh, what the military does. I've allowed um, other people to see what we do here, but being able to see another type of operation such as humanitarian efforts was amazing. So uh, the highlight of that, like I said, we were in all those places, Honduras, Guatemala, and Panama. Um, Guatemala was a very special place and I'll show some pictures of what I was able to catch, capture, I've shared them before, but the week of Thanksgiving, um, I was able to document and um, deliver life-saving aid, food, diapers, water, um, and be able to provide things for people that were isolated by the effects of the hurricanes that had just come through, because it was two hurricanes, which is crazy over that period of time that I was down there, um, they hit back to back, Etta and Iota, and did some real damage to these communities. Um, and we were able to partner with the local governments in those areas, um, the local military um, or special police in those areas and help out tremendously. So that was such a amazing thing to witness um, and although it was unfortunate for those families, um, I'm glad that not only I was there to document it, but that we were doing something as a military, we were helping these people. Um, the pilots were putting in crazy hours. We were going on all sorts of missions, uh, riding, flying in, uh, CH-47 Chinooks, and HH-60 Blackhawks, UH-60 as well. Um, the difference being one for uh, medical responses, which we did also. I uh, flew out life-saving aid and rescued people. And that was one of the first missions that I was on in Honduras, uh, responding to the first hurricane. We left the base and immediately went to go rescue. And um, this clip right here, is pretty famous in my eyes. Like it got over a million views, something that I was able to capture and be there for and witness. Um, and what I got out of all of it was uh, the glory of God and the beauty that was around us, but yet there was devastation happening. And when people are willing to do the right thing, willing to act fast, and uh, promptly and effectively to the issues that are going on. We can help so many people. Um, so the uh, glory in people being able to respond quickly to those who are hurting um, is something that is innately the gospel story. So obviously I was touched by it. I was impacted by what we were doing down there and glad to be a part of it. I'm glad that I was there during the time that I was for the reasons we were there and also the people that were there, uh, which goes to the next thing that was a part, a major part of me being there is the uh, men's Bible study that I was a part of helped so much. 
uh, as soon as I got there, the topics that they were discussing was fatherhood and being a man of Christ. And that hit, that resonated so much because that's what I was trying to focus on while I was deployed was how do I be the best father that I can be? So being surrounded by these other men of God and being able to um, just pour out my heart and listen to their hearts, the different things that we are all going through, those that were separated from their children during this time. And although they had got to uh, be with them for years, it's still hard to be a father and be pulled away from your kids. You're missing things and uh, they're having to go through problems without you. Your face timing when they really want your presence and um, being able to grow in Christ, um, strengthen each other's spirit, sharpen iron with iron was so important. Um, and, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. So I think that was another reason why I was down there to be a part of that so that I would be equipped for coming back home and being uh, the father that my son needed being the husband that my wife needed. So the wrap up of the deployment story is that I uh, was going to be extended because of COVID and everything. They wanted my replacement to get there two weeks, um, be there on time, but then quarantine for two weeks. Thus, I would have to stay for three weeks for allowing a uh, proper time for turnover. That would have pushed me out to the end of the month. I was already due back on the due date for my child. So um, not wanting that to happen, um, to put my wife in any sort of stress about that. Uh, it was my petition throughout. It was like, how do I get home sooner than the end of this? And um, after a little bit of back and forth with uh, the uh, personnel office, my deployment manager, the offices in Honduras worked it out and I ended up being able to come back a month early, which was a blessing um, because I was able to be home with my wife, my sister who came in earlier. She's been here since um, I left for the deployment. So my wife hasn't been completely alone, but going into labor um, was going to be something that would be scary if I wasn't there for her. And I wanted to make sure she was at complete peace. So uh, made that happen, got back on time. And uh, that'll be the next story, the birth story of Valor and everything that comes along with that. So uh, ask any questions you would like down below. And I hope that this has been encouraging to you whatever you're going through, whether it's a hard situation or it's a normal thing, like in the military, it's, it's hard, but also normal to be deployed. And yet um, the best way to go through it is with God. So I pray that uh, any situation that you're experiencing, you go through it with God. Elihu.